All right, guys, welcome back. Um, today, I'm just gonna have a quick look and show you guys the um, 2022 Toyota CHR Hybrid with the 1.8 Atkinson Cycle Hybrid engine. Uh, this is the Cobber model, so you get the nicer wheels, you get the um, full leather interior. Very nice here. Got this funky little door handle here. Leather back seat there. Yeah, so this is my mother-in-law's car and I actually don't mind driving it. It's a bit small for my liking. Oh, let's jump in here. And I will say, uh, being someone that is uh, almost 6'3", so I'm pretty tall, I'm pretty thin, but I'm very tall. I do have to have the seat quite far back and on its lower setting. And I did notice when I did this, um, it's not an electric seat, even though it's the Cobber model, you've got the electric lumbar support, <clears throat> you don't have the um, electric height adjustment or tilt or moving in and out, everything is still mechanical, which I do find a little strange, I mean a lot of other, um, oh the engine just kicked on, a lot of other models like you know obviously the Camry, the Orion, um, which I don't make anymore, but um, the RAV4 and I think the Toyota Corolla Cross has all electric seats, but this doesn't. Um, and there's no memory CD though, obviously. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit of a letdown. And I did notice though, um, the leather here is really nice. And it's a nice sort of, everything sort of a soft touch, vinyl sort of leather here. Um, but I did notice that this doesn't line up. So if you look at the other side, the other side almost lines up perfectly. This side just doesn't quite line up very well. Like this part sticks up a lot more than here. It's hard to see on cam uh, camera because of the light. But you can see this pops up just a bit more. And I don't know, I'm a bit OCD. To me, <clears throat> that looks a bit half ass. So I think I'm coming down with the cold. Um, yeah, so there's a few little things about this that annoy me. I do like the auto folding mirrors. That's a great, great little feature to have, especially with the um, tight car parks now. And I love the fact that um, you can have, you know, the air conditioning going without the engine running. Obviously, the engine's running now because, um, as you'll see here on the energy monitor, information, eco, um, the hybrid battery's almost depleted. So, yeah, for the most part, it stays in EV mode for a very long time. Even if the engine's cold and you're not demanding the heater, it won't actually kick on the engine for a while, um, even though you know, it's stone cold until you start moving and then it's like, okay, I need to warm up now. So I do find that a little bit bizarre because, you know, if you need to get going quickly in the morning and you want more power, you sort of have to drive it for a bit to then get the engine to kick on to then warm up to give you more power. So I kind of preferred it to start straight away and then warm up and then turn off rather than you drive around for a while and then it turns up and, you know, turns on and then warms up and then turns off. So... I don't know, it's hybrid stuff, like I guess it saves you a lot of petrol if you're just moving the car in and out of your driveway and things like that, um, but yeah, that's just my opinion, and full tank, you know, 780 k's, but I think you can get about a thousand from what they're saying, that's pretty good, and the engine just shut off now, almost up to temperature, three bars on the, um, on the dial there, something I also don't like is this cheesy sort of shiny plastics, I don't know why, like Toyota and Mazda especially, like Mazda's really bad at this lately. Everything is cheesy and shiny and it looks terrible. You get hair on it, you get fingerprints. Look at this. It was only cleaned a few days ago and look at that. It's already got fingerprints and hair and food and everything on there. And all this here is such a wasted space. You've got a massive drink bottle holder here, but a drink bottle's not going to fit in there. You can't really fit a coffee cup in there without spilling it. So I really don't know the point of that. I don't know, I feel like that could have been like a like what the Camrys have, like even just a cubby hole with a, um, with a slide there, or they could have moved the shifter forward and then have two cup holders here. I don't know, it's just a bit bizarre. I mean, obviously you've got your traction control here, you've got your hill holder and your um, EV mode for when the battery is almost fully charged and the engine's warmed up, it'll let you use that. You do have a little USB-C port here and a little cubby hole there, which is almost useless. Um, yeah, really not a lot of room to mount your stuff. Like, it looks big, this window, but, you know, it's really not a very big window. And also, the space in the back, 
look at that, how claustrophobic that is. Like I barely fit in the back of this and you just can not even see out the side windows because my head comes to like here, um, as I'll show you in a second. But yeah, not, not a hell of a lot of room. I mean, the feet, feet room's not too bad. I mean, if you've got kids or whatever, but yeah, getting, getting a car seat in and out of there or getting a capsule in and out would be a nightmare. So yeah, it, it is good for my mother-in-law and my father-in-law because, you know, obviously we've moved out now and um, my brother-in-law's also moved out. So, um, and everyone's in their twenties now and well, I'm 30, I guess, but everyone's old enough now not to necessarily need to be in here, except for the grandparents occasionally. So, so there's that as well. Um, I'll just do another walk around and I'll show you the boot and I'll also sit in the back as well and we'll go from there. So yeah, I forget what the uh, color's called, but I think it's like a kind of like a lipstick red or something like that. Um, I don't exactly remember the color, but it's not a bad color. I'm not a huge red person, to be honest. I would have preferred blue or um, like gray or something like that. I don't really like yellows and reds and blacks very much. But anyway, we'll just look at the boot. Oh yeah, you got the um, hy hybrid cobber badge there. So of course, being a new car, you've got this very useless space saver, which is only good for maximum 200 kilometers at a speed of 80 kilometers an hour. So basically useless. You do have a little bit of storage there and you've got a little bit of, um, you know, you could probably keep, I don't know, toilet paper and jumper leads in here, even though you shouldn't really jump start this or be jump started by this. So there's a couple of things there. You do have ISOFIX. I don't know, might be underneath, underneath the seat. So yeah, you can fit three car seats in. I don't know why you would, but it'd be very squishy, but you can do that if you wish. I'm not a huge fan of these funky little um, door handle things. And I do find that looks a little bit loose and cheesy as well. And mind you, this is an X demo and it's not even a year old, so. It is a used car technically, and they did get it for um, last year, or well, the start of this year where everything was crazy. They did actually pay MSRP for it, um, even though anything hybrid in Australia seems to be going for 20 or 30,000 over MSRP, which is just insane. Um, so these brand new are about 42 to 44,000, depending on, um, you know, your bonnet protectors and your, um, you know, your, all your treatments and all the, up the floor mats and the, upselling crap they try to sell you um but yeah they got it for pretty much msrp um with warranty and everything like that and you got 10 years uh battery warranty i believe as well on the hybrid battery so yeah as you can see the um it is a typical little suv and by the way this is front wheel drive not all wheel drive like the other models the hybrid um in this year only comes as a front wheel drive i do believe the next model is going to be offered in all wheel drive hybrid so that would be a lot better. But anyway, the seats, fairly hard and, and small compared to like a Camry or Orion or, or even a RAV4. But I suppose that's the market now is to have everything, you know, looking sporty and, and looking a lot faster and sporty than it actually is. I mean, it's not terribly uncomfortable, um, but I can definitely see why this would be marketed, marketed at either a young person's car or an oldie sort of car. Um, just to drive around because you know, it's a bit girly as well. It's got these funny looking little teardrop Cute little la la sparkly Kind of dints on the roof. Um, it's got this funky looking diamond um, Light there and you've got this sort of light here which <laughs> Guys come on like it's 2022 2023 and it's still got a halogen light bulb in there It's still not even LED. So come on Toyota put LEDs in your interior already, you know Mazda's doing it even freaking Hyundai and Kia's doing it. Um, you also got these little headrests here. I mean, that's as high as that goes. So this is probably gonna be suitable for like a 10 year old kid because uh, when I'm here, this barely even comes up to my shoulders and same with on the left here, this is full height and my shoulders are gonna be there. And as you can see, when I'm here, I do just have a tiny bit of headroom here if I duck down, but Really, if I go to look out the window, this is where my eyes are. Look at that. You have to look down to look out the window. And if you're packed in here with, you know, two people, two other tall people, you're going to feel, and this seat's going to have to be back because you've got a tall passenger as well. You're going to have a little bit of leg room here and a bit of knee room, but you're still going to feel very claustrophobic. 
but yeah, I know it seems like I'm crapping all over this car. I do actually really like this car, but there is a few things that do annoy me about it. And also with the, um, you got it in the front as well as, as well as the back. You've got this sort of very hard, like dimply, nipply plastic sort of stuff. Um, not a huge fan. I do like the, oh, this is plastic back here. Anyway, in the front, you got leather here. Here, they sort of cheaped out and gave you plastic. Uh, they do give you a cup holder here and none in the middle. That's okay. You don't really have charging ports. No, you don't have charging ports. Uh, but yeah, not a fan of this dimply stuff. It just feels very hard and cheap, kind of like a, I don't know, an early Yaris or early sort of Hyundai product. I don't know. They should have made this like suede or something a bit more decent. I don't know. It just feels a bit tacky. And this feels really tacky for a $42,000 car. Like it's solid, but just the material choice is just terrible. You do have pouches here, which is good. So you've got the not for sale sign for when they bought it. Um, so this yeah. brings me to my passenger spot, I guess. You've got the seats in a middle position so people can still sit in the back and the front. I haven't moved it since sitting in the back. And you've just got a tiny little bit of, like, I'm glad I'm a skinny guy because if I was a bit, you know, not body shaming anyone, but if I was a bit more chunkier, I would definitely not fit here. Like I have a lot of leg room underneath here, but just this part here, I don't know. I just feel like this is really, terribly designed you can't even see where the hole is here to push it oh, it just falls on your lap and as you can see you're really only going to get the service manual out if you've got heaps of stuff in there you've got to move your legs back to get to reach in here shallow as anything yeah i i don't know guys like i would have preferred probably something that's i don't know if this was pushed back a bit and then opened up a bit more normally um that would be nice but Anyway, I do like this. This is nice and soft here. You've got a nice soft um, soft leather touch here. You've got your integrated screen, which they're all doing now. Everyone's doing the funny tablet thing still, even though it's about 10 years old now. Um, I still would have preferred, like everything, I prefer the screens here. I don't like them up here. The sun gets on them, they don't last. Anyway, every single car manufacturer is doing it now and they've been doing it since like 2015, 2016. So I can't really complain about that. Even the new Camrys have this. Um, but yeah, I will say though, the shifter feels very solid. Obviously, it's not going to go out of gear unless I've got my foot on the brake. The car's still on. Got electric um, handbrake as well, like I sort of pointed to before. You've got individual shutting vents. You've got your hazard lights here. Um, now, with the screen here, let's go home. It does have Apple CarPlay and Android Audio, but you do have to um, plug it in for that. It's not wireless for some reason, even though it's a 22 model. Um, you've got your um, navigation here, you've got, uh, what else you got? Let's have a look at the menu. Yeah, you've got lots of stuff anyway. You've got um, all the generic stuff. You can connect it to your phone, like I said before. Apple CarPlay and everything, App Suite. Um, got your information there, your traffic incidences, or I like to leave it on this when I'm test driving this car because I like to see what the, um, you know, engine, the electric motor and the hybrid uh, system is doing, which is really cool. Well, the engine just kicked on again and obviously in the center screen here you've got um got your fuel economy stuff here you've got your 91 percent ev so it tells you what the percentage of is your um what it's doing and things like that how long you've been in ev mode for you've got your g meter you also have your k's to empty and then you've got your energy monitor which i like leaving on as well um, also when it's in EV mode, it just comes up with the EV light down here. Um, fuel gauge, obviously. Now the gauge goes to 220 guys, but honestly, I think it's only going to be going about 180, 190, and then it's sort of governed there because, um, the hybrid system has given all of, all of its life out to what it's got. And really these, these things aren't really meant to be fast. I think it's zero to hundreds, like nine or 10 seconds or something. So similar to what the Corolla is. And it's only like, I think 80, 90 kilowatts or something. Um, yeah, so definitely not a powerhouse. Uh, these things, I'm not sure what the torque figures are with Toyotas because with the hybrids, uh, it's a CVT, so it's really hard to measure the torque. I think you can dyno them, um, and get sort of like a rough reading, but yeah, because they don't have gears, it will just give you a, just a ridiculous figure for a few seconds. So it might be, you know, two, three, four hundred newton meters of torque for a couple of seconds and that's it. So 
But yeah, no, it's a great little car though. It gets good fuel economy. It's like, you know, fuel economy's in the four or five litres per hundred or less even. Uh, probably going to be worse now because I'm running the engine and, you know, got the air, con air conditioning going as well. And obviously being coming out of winter, um, we've been using the heater and things like that. And there we go, it's gone into EV mode. So yeah, guys, um, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, one day I probably will try to do a zero to a hundred with this and really test it out. Um, you know, nothing illegal, but just, you know, see what it goes like. And you've seen my previous video of um, it showing the hybrid displays as well. You've probably seen that already. If not, check it out. It's not overly exciting, but it just shows um, me driving along with the camera pointed to the screen so you can see the hybrid system working. So yeah, anyway, thanks again for joining me. Um, I'll be giving more updates about um, cars and, you know, my bike. And yes, I still have my bike. I haven't sold it yet, although I haven't really made any effort to sell it because... Um, yeah, bit of a story there, and I'll go into that soon. But yeah, anyway, have a good one, guys, and stay safe.